Yo soy Media Villa de Criticólogos, como pueden ver me encuentro al lado derecho, a mano izquierda, con una leyenda de los cómics. Tom Bela, Tom Ward contra Criticólogos. It's, the books are all gone. We, I, I know. We ran out of books at noon, so thank wow. you for all the people who came out to, to buy the books. I heard the line was insane. Yeah, it was, there's still people out there oh, right man. now. And you know what? Those people are wearing black and they're built like me, so they're dying. You can tell they're almost <laughs> dead out there. There's a guy in a Godzilla suit. Yeah. I don't know how he's surviving, but it's uh, he should be on his back dead. Yeah, I, so. know, I know. Tom, let's talk about a little bit of the new book. Okay. Ch Chica Cabra. What? Yes, okay. First, first of all, everybody's talking about the title. Talk about talk a little bit about the title. Where the title came from? The what? The title. Chicha. Chica. Oh, Chica. okay. Chica. I, someone told me what that really means. Uh -huh. But I was thinking of Chupacabra, but since it's a girl, I went with Chupacabra. But then I, I heard it means like goat whore or something like that, yeah. so I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't really care. care. So if people are expecting goat whore in the book, they're going to be in for a surprise. Uh -huh. But it's an idea I bounced around. Originally, it was about a boy who found out he came from a family of Chupacabra people. It was so stupid, I threw it away against the wall. I just ditched the whole thing. And then um, I had a student. And she's the one, uh, uh, Pat. And, and I got to talk to her, and she was a, a lovely girl, but she also likes these beetles, these rhino beetles. Where's the one you have? Real ones that crawl up your arm and stuff. And we talked about that, and I thought, well, that's kind of a cool uh, contrast to how she looks. And so I would start doing these little pages of scenes and they got more and more. I have like probably 30 or 40 of those sketch pads uh, filled up with story ideas. And I sent it to IDW when it was all done. And they said, sure, like within two days I had a contract. And they made the books, especially for the con. And it was a rush order and they nailed it. And uh, yeah, people came today and it was they were gone by noon. It was hilarious. That's, that's, that's good news. That's nothing wrong with that. You know it's good saying? news. But then it's it kind of sucks to tell people all day long, well, sorry, we're sold out. But because, you know, people wanted to get it. Yeah. But the response was so awesome. I, this is the best con I've been to. The, be the best weekend I've had at a con. Can you talk about a little bit about the story? About it's about a girl who, um, she's not going to go to college. She's, she's in high school. And, uh, but sh listen, I never went to college. So I, I, I put that in her. Um, they go to El Moro and through a series of events, she goes in these underground tunnels they're supposed to be under there and she falls into a lab and at the lab is uh, this creature in a giant dome and one of the rocks from the ceiling falls and, sh and breaks the glass and it comes out and swirls around and goes inside of her. So I grew up on, on Miyazaki films. If, if this was an American film, they'd find ways to kill that thing that's inside of her. But with Miyazaki, his advice would be learn to live with it. And yeah, and so the book's about that. It's about two different personas living in one body. And it was a joy to do. It's the hardest thing I ever did in my life was this book. But it came out really fun. And um, IDW wants more books. So we're going to be doing two, three, four. You have a series, right? That's the second I had a series called True Stories Spur to God. This is only going to be in book form. It's going to be a graphic novel. The next one comes out next year, and we'll do the same thing. We'll have a special cover for the Comic Con, and then we'll probably order 300 books for that. So, uh, but you're sold out for, even for tomorrow. Yeah, we're done. Oh my God. I'll be doing sketches. Yeah, I'm done. We oh had Fantastic God. Four books, and those are, that's all we have left on those. Of course. Everything of course. blew out this morning. It was crazy. Let's talk a little bit about the, your, your, your history doing, sure. doing comics. From Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. Um, how, how, how have you evolved as an artist? Well, I started off at a newspaper making cartoons and um, a weekly comic strip about my life called True Story, Swear to God. And then I went to Disney and I met Lily at a bus stop. I moved here and it was really about, um, you know, I started off small. I went mini comics, black and white, no color. And I learned as I went along. I made like 17 mini comics. And then I made that book there, Magic. Disney saw that and they flew us out and married us because of the book. That got me jobs at Marvel to, to do Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and those kind of characters. And then from there, I did Chicacabra. And if you read it, it's really, a, it's really about depression because I suffer from depression. Chicacabra, instead of trying to kill that thing inside of me, I learned to live with it. I let it out when it wants to go out and then it comes back in and it's like my pet. 
I have way better luck with depression if I, with that kind of a concept than I do with taking six pills a day and blah, 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 you know, and being zoned out. Yeah, I, it was very therapeutic to write it because it's, I think people who suffer from that will relate a lot to this book. And it totally changed my whole head around about my depression, that it's not just, an, it's not cancer. You, you're not going to beat depression, so you learn to live with it. And, uh, and that was the, the focal line of this. They both are, they're two creatures. Isabel and Chikabra are both these two creatures. They've been fucked over big time in their life. And when they see each other, they connect in that sense. So they both kind of need each other. But training this thing is really hard for her. When she goes to sleep, it wakes up and it takes over and does whatever it wants to. Uh, and, when, and when it wakes up, she wakes up. And, but if they're both asleep, they share the same dream world they can do talk they can do conversations with and stuff Tom, if it's sold out in here where, they, where can people get the book june 11th you can get it at metro comics or comics megazone anywhere that sells graphic novels and you can get it on amazon and we'll be doing signing parties at metro comics and at megazone whoever wants to have me do a signing Perfect. but those two places will be the first ones i go to Perfect. The, those two stores supported me since many comic days they're amazing stores and I love them to death. They're, they're wonderful people. Perfect. Tom, thank you for the interview. Oh, thank you, man. Thank wow, you. we kept this short. That's awesome. Yeah.